just finished up today's session. A um, little bit wet outside, but it stayed up for us. Um, coaching client in about an hour. Um, so I brought myself a banana and also a carb killer protein shake because I know I'm going to eat breakfast probably want to get in. So just to keep me ticking over. Protein for that recovery, just to reinforce that straight after the session. And then a banana just to replace them glycogen stores. So for my next session, I'll be prepped and fueled. We started off with a dynamic warm-up again. We went through toe walks, heel walks, just to prepare the ankles a little bit better for the high impact. We then moved on to high knee pulls, bent knee pulls, just for each side of the hip. And then we moved on to some single leg deadlifts, moving in reverse, just to prep the ankles, uh, hips and knees simultaneously, along with the hamstrings and the glutes. to a little bit of a dynamic hip flexor stretch um, and then we finish with some Cossack squats so some lateral hip movement. <laughs> Next part of the session we moved on to these little fellas so hurdles um, we've been doing this for quite a while now, so we've learned to land, but we still wanted to put that into the session just to reinforce that type of mechanics. So we went small hurdle, large hurdle, small hurdle, large hurdle. We progressed it still, even though we've been preparing a long time, but we went to absorb force first, so went from landing mechanics, and then we moved on to a double touch, a little bit more of a reactive element in there, so just preparing for that high impact force. And then we finish with a little bit of a depth sort of jump or reacting to the floor. Get the jumps relatively low because we wanted to focus on power rather than fatigue ourselves. So we've done two sets of each with around three to five jumps each set. After some double leg jumps, we then moved on to some single leg jumps as a sort of progression to go from. Uh, we went through the same procedure. We went through land them first and then we just stayed on a double foot tap with this one because we're probably not ready yet to, to produce that type of force. We then moved on to some banded drills just to work on that lean of the torso and to work on that acceleration phase. Unfortunately, the band ended up snapping, as you'll see. Um, just had to start. It's already snapped. It was a resistance band and then we started using it for these type of drills. But we cracked on and we tried to get the most out of it that we could. We started with some marches first just to get the timing of the arms and the legs. Then we moved into a little bit of a faster turnover, trying to replicate that force into the ground. And then we put them both together and went from a march into a short sprint. And I'm running, sir. Ah! Imagine it saying run. Go again.
main part of the session was heavy sled drags just to reinforce that lean, that angle position of the torso, similar to acceleration, because that's what we were struggling with at the moment. And then we walk from the finishing part of the sled to the top cone and back, just to give us enough rest, similar to contrast trainer, where you do a heavy implement straight into a lighter one that replicates the same movement. And then as soon as we got back to the cone, we went for a half kneel and takeoff for similar distance. Again, we kept the reps pretty low um, and the sets, and we went for maximal intent and force and with maximal rest in between. Last part, we focused on reacting to a command. So today was, we focused on go. Um, normally we've been doing a countdown of three, two, one, go. So it's a little bit easier to focus on that takeoff. Today we didn't have too much time to think. It was quite tough, but we did get through it, especially with the slippy floor. Go. Hope you enjoyed today's video for the average sprinters trying to get fast and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.